What's up guys, Ike is here again with another professional Cinema 4D tutorial and I'm particularly excited today because what we're going to be looking at is how to use global illumination within Cinema 4D along with ambient inclusion to create this realistic studio render so it's like it's actually being shot in a real photography studio um, we've got these nice soft boxes reflected and we've got this nice seamless background so that's all good and this is particularly useful because it's pretty easy to do and you don't need to go out and spend your hard earned money on any expensive plugins or anything like that so this is a good workaround on how to get studio like reflections and how to set up your scene with the seamless background so let's not waste any more time and head on into cinema and get this thing built so in cinema you can see if I pull back here this is what the setup looks like we've got a couple of soft boxes and we got this nice kind of sphere light up here and it's pretty simple to do so I'm just gonna remove all these and we'll start from the start move these and we'll move these materials for now so first off what we're gonna create is that seamless backdrop so you can see it's like it's in a real studio there's no background um, but we've still got shadows on the floor so to do that first off what we're going to do is just add a floor and we can do that by going to MoGraph no not MoGraph floor there we go and next thing that we're going to do is add a background and we can do that by in the same tab background and on the floor I want you to right click on the floor go to cinema 4d tags and then add a compositing tag and once that's on there click the compositing tag uncheck self shadowing and check composite background and what that's going to do that's going to set up our basic so a seamless backdrop let me just turn off global, global illumination so we can see what we're doing here so it doesn't look like anything yet but when we start to put our spheres in there and and we get some shadows on there it will look really nice so first off I'm just going to add three spheres I'm going to hit control C or command C and command V and just duplicate the spheres twice move them over and position them nicely there we go looking good so now in the example I showed you we've got this overhead softbox and to create that what we're going to do is if I add a plane We'll move this up a, just a little bit so we can see what we're working on. And I'm just going to scale it down this way a little bit and scale it down this way a little bit. And now, what we're going to do, we're just going to drop that into a cloner object. So, if we go up to MoGraph, cloner object, and now what we're going to do is make the plane a, a child of the cloner object. So, all you have to do is select the plane and drop it into the cloner object and you can see straight away that's cloned the plane but what we want is we want to change the mode instead of linear we want it to be a grid array so that's all good and then we just want to take the middle count down reposition this and then you just want to increase the size like so increase this size as well looking good and now we can move that up into the scar position that perfect and now what we're going to do we're going to create a material to put onto the plane and the cloner object so we get these really nice reflections going on so to do that I'm just going to create a new material 
head on into the material editor. Um, I'm going to turn off specular, turn the colour to white, and then I'm going to check luminance, and that's all good to go. And then all you have to do is drop that onto your cloner object. And if we render now, I don't think we'll see anything just yet because we haven't got any materials on just yet. But don't worry, it will all start to come together very soon. So next what we want to do is create the materials for the spheres. So again, new material. And in the example, there was a couple of red ones, black ones even, and there was one red one in the middle. So I'm just going to change the colour to red drop the blue and green down and I'm going to check reflection under the texture of the reflection I'm going to add for now give it some realistic reflections and then just drop the strength down and also the brightness so it's not too intense um, turn off specular as well you don't want specular Okay, and then we're just going to make the black material now. Same principle, but we'll turn this to black. You don't want it full black. You just almost black. You don't want to go all the way there. Turn off specular again. Check reflection. Add the texture. Change the texture to for now. And drop the brightness and strength down all good and now all we have to do is drop these materials onto our spheres like so and now what I'm going to do is open up the render settings and I've already got them here ambient inclusion and global illumination and if yours aren't there you can go to effect and they'll be in this category here they aren't in here because they're up here on my one so if they're not there they'll be under the effects tab and you just select them and then check so I'm going to check global illumination and ambient inclusion and that's all good and if we render now you can see the global illumination doing its work it does take a little while it can be a little render hog so just be aware of that and you can start to see now we're building up this nice scene with a seamless backdrop and we've got some shadows going on and the softbox reflection there is one more thing that I want to change and that's in the luminance material I just want to change the brightness of the luminance to around 250 we might have to go up to 300 we'll see how it looks you can see straight away that's brightened it up so yeah like I said it does take a little while with global illumination but nothing too major so straight away we get that really cool studio effect and there was one couple more things that I added which was I'm going to add another plane move this up a little bit select the plane and I'm just gonna resize it just a little bit and now if we hit R on the keyboard that's gonna rotate it and if you hold shift down that let you, let, lets you rotate the plane within degrees of 5 so you can see it goes 5, 15, 20 change that to around 90 degrees Oh, we don't want to do that and then what you want to do with this is just position it just over here so you want it over to the left move it over here a little bit and if we hit R on the keyboard again 
just going to rotate it right and rotate it that way a little bit so if we look now that might need moving up just a tad move up there like so and then all you want to do is drop the luminance material onto that plane so if we preview this now just get this set up you can see that now we've got that extra soft box in the back and we can do this again by going adding another sphere and then hit T on the keyboard to change the size and then we're just going to increase the size of this new sphere and once again we're just going to move it over to the right somewhere over here is good and then once again just drop the luminance material onto the sphere and you're good to go if you preview this now you can see global illumination doing its work and we can already see the, the reflections and that's looking really nice because not only is it reflecting the soft boxes, it's also reflecting the other spheres and the reflections within the other spheres if that makes sense. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it for today. Just a quick look at global illumination and how to set up a realistic studio lighting scene. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you very soon in another tutorial. And also don't forget to rate the video as well guys. It really helps me out. So thanks a lot and I'll see you later.